Hello and welcome to my first Magic the Gathering deck tech where I spill the tea about one of my first ever Commander decks and um, today I'm going to show you my Galta Primal Hunger deck um, I've put the deck list in the description as well for you so you can have a look there So Galta, he's a 12-12, 12 mana Elder Dinosaur and the text says Galta Primal Hunger costs X less to cast where X is the total power of creatures you control. So it also has trample and the aim of the deck is to use lots of ramp and get low costing creatures with really high power out in the earlier turns and to win I would use what people might call them overrun effects you know such as Crater Hoof Behemoth um, but I'll go into more detail about that later, okay? So this deck is a stompy, smashy deck and it's one of the first decks I've ever made so it's definitely developed and changed over time. Um, it's not necessarily the most optimised deck that's super streamlined. It's just more cards that I like and I have fun playing with um, but I have to admit it's fun to win, isn't it? So I think it's still a strong deck. <laughs> um, I'm totally open to suggestions and I'm quite new to Magic the Gathering, I've been playing Commander for about two years now um, and I love discovering new cards so please let me know in the comments if you know any new cards that you think I should put in or old cards, whatever. If I were to give my deck a number out of 10, it is a bit of a tough one, um, with it having Gaia's Cradle in it I would say it's probably an 8 out of 10 but without Guy's Cradle it is more of a 7 out of 10. So to start with we'll have a look at the ramp. So I'm sure you know green is the colour when it comes to ramp. So there's quite a few ramp spells in this deck. So to get started let's get Sol Ring out of the way, okay? Um, it's an absolute commander staple and such a good feeling if you can play it on your starting turn and you do sometimes get a nice eye roll off your opponent <laughs> as well. We've then got Lanwar Tribe, Lanwar Elves and Elvish Mystic. So a nice foil on these two. <laughs> and having creature ramp is good in this deck um, as every little helps when it comes to getting Galter onto the battlefield. You know, with these two being a 1-1, maybe not so much, but this is a 3-3, so it does give three up to go into Galter, okay? So there's two sorcery ramp spells in the deck and that's Cultivate and Rampant Growth. So I love this Borderless Cultivate, um, I remember seeing it from Commander 21 I think, yeah, and hoping to get my hands on it and here it is. So another card that lets me search for lands is Yavamaya Elder, um, it's an all round decent green staple and it's good for blocking as well and drawing cards. And then when it comes to Devotion, we've got Karametra's Acolyte and Nyx Lotus. So with this deck being mono green, it means I'm really going to get the most out of Devotion cards such as these two. And they're both shiny as well. <laughs> Moving on to the exciting ramp, we've got Lotus Cobra. So it's great in this deck, even though it's not a land or landfall deck, it still plays its part really well with mono green. Wayward Sawtooth is next and it's one of my favourites for Galta. It allows you to play an extra land every turn which helps speed up the process of getting the City's Blessing on it. And so it can attack and block once you've got the City's Blessing. And it has 5 power and it only costs 3, so 2 and a green to play. So it's ticking you up to playing the Commander pretty quickly. What else can I say? I mean, I've got no complaints about this card. And it's a dinosaur, which kind of is nice with the goal of theme. Next, we've got Nyx Bloom Ancient. So this costs four and three green, which seems a bit steep for ramp until you read what it does. It's an elemental five, five enchantment creature that has trample. And if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. So this card is extremely powerful, especially if you look at cards like Nyx Lotus, uh, where have you gone? These two. So if you tap in these with your Devotion, say you've got 8 Devotion on the board, um, if you've got Nyx Bloom Ancient out, you're actually tapping for 24, if my math is correct, <laughs> which is crazy, it's insane. 
Um, so you're basically tripling your devotion, which is some sweet, sweet plays, my friend. Sweet, sweet plays. I've got a Court of Bounty in here, which brings the Monarch mechanic into the deck. So a Court of Bounty reads, when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. So that means at the end of my turn, I would draw a card. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So if you are the Monarch, instead you may put a creature or a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So Court of the Bounty is a win-win situation for me because if I can keep the Monarch, then I'm getting some big scary creatures from my hand onto the battlefield. That's without paying their casting costs which ultimately gets Galter out way quicker if I've not already done so. Um, but if I do lose the Monarch, then, you know, I still get to put an extra land down each turn. It's not a massive loss, but with my big smashy deck in 1v1, I should be able to get the Monarch pretty easily. Um, I did forget to mention, actually, that with it being locked down and everything, this deck's kind of been tailored a bit more to 1v1 recently. It's just me and my boyfriend playing at the moment, so it's got less multiplayer stuff in there and more tailored towards 1v1, so keep that in mind whilst you have a look at the deck. We actually pulled this Court of Bounty from a Commander Legends box, we didn't buy it as a single. And we actually pulled all five courts in the end, which is really good going. Not from the same box, we bought a few boxes in the end, one was by accident. <laughs> I filmed an unboxing of a Commander Legends box, um, which you can check out here. Have a look at that if you like. So moving on to Artifact Ramp, we've got Emerald Medallion and Ronas's Monument. So they're both kind of similar. Emerald Medallion costs two and says green spells you cast cost one less to cast. So that applies to all of my green spells. Whereas Ronas's Monument just focuses on green creature spells and they cast one less to cast. And whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gets trample until end of turn. So this is great for two ways. So the first way it makes one of my creatures bigger and has trample for combat so I can get more damage through onto my opponents and secondly it gives my creature plus two power so that's an extra two power that is taken off Galtus casting cost which is really good as well want to get him out as soon as we can really so that's my ramp spells let's move on to card draw we've got classics such as tireless tracker and um, guardian project and beast whisperer Ooh. There's a cheeky foil there. <laughs> and I'm not exactly lacking with ramp and mana with this one, so it's great that I get a lot of card draw into this deck as well, so that I've still always got stuff to play and leading up to gold to coming out. We've got the Great Henge, there's a nice foil there as well. And that's what you might call the jack of all trades of greenness, okay? It works great with this deck as it tends to cost way less once the game gets going. And it's a right bargain when I get some creatures out on the battlefield, okay? Because it costs nine, seven and two green, but it costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So even if I don't have Galter out yet, I've still got some really high power creatures in there. So even if I had a five, five out on its own, it's gonna cost five less. So I can get this out really quickly and soon take all the advantages in from it. Next we've got Selvala. Huge ramp and huge card draw. She is amazing for this deck. Um, I'm sure you know, she's a pretty popular card. I don't have anything bad to say about Selvala. I wish I got to play her more, you know? She's just one of those ones that I don't tend to draw that much, but when I do, it's really cool. It's really great fun. So we've got next, we've got Greater Good. She's an enchantment. Um, so it's basically, I can sacrifice Galter and I draw 12 cards and then I discard three and then easily play Galter for two again. So it's great for when I get stuck or if my opponent's about to win and I need an answer, then I always turn to greater good on the battlefield. Garrick's Uprising. This is an amazing card draw for this deck. I've got loads of creatures with more than four power. Played it the other day actually. I didn't draw the first card, so it says when the Garrick's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you draw a card. I didn't, 
but I still played it because I knew I had loads more creatures with power 4 and more that were upcoming. So it's still helpful because I drew loads of cards after that and all creatures I have have trample for a 3 costing enchantment which is really good. So we're going to move on to looking at cards that work super well with this deck. You might call them synergies I suppose and these are high power creatures with a low mana cost so you can get Galter out fast. So we've got things like Steel Leaf Champion, we've got Ronas the Indomitable, hopefully I said that right, <laughs> and we've got things like Yorvo. So Yorvo, he gets big really fast, okay? So when he enters the battlefield, he comes in with four plus one counters on it. And whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under my control, you put a plus one counter on Yorvo. Then, if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's power, you put another plus one counter on Yorvo. So he's gonna get big real fast. Played him the other day and he became an 11-11. <laughs> Once I got the ball rolling and playing creatures, I think I had Garrick's Uprising and Yorvo out at the same time. So I was drawing cards and then playing more creatures down that I were drawing and that made Yorvo even bigger. So you wanna play him as soon as you can so you can start putting those plus one, plus one counters on him. ASAP. Next up, we've got Goreclaw. Really good, really, really good. He makes bigger creatures cost two less to cast because he says creature spells you cast with four or greater cost two less. It makes a huge difference to casting all the good stuff as well as Galter. So immediately, as well as being four power, he takes Galter down two more. So he's technically a six power towards my commander, which is awesome. And uh, my opponents tend to get a bit scared of him as well, which is great. <laughs> Finally, we've got Love Struck Beast. This is one of my favourite cards from my favourite set, which is Throne of Eldrain. I am absolutely in love with this art, it's so nice. I'm a big Disney fan, so I think that's why I love Eldrain so much, because it just reminds me of Disney stuff and this is really beautiful. So I think they call it the storybook art, but I could be wrong. Just looking at general good green stuff for the deck, we've got Nessie and Boar. All creatures able to block Nessie and Boar do so, and whenever Nessie and Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. He costs three and two green, and he's a 10-6. It's as close to a board wipe, I would say, as you can get in green. He's great because if you've got loads of stuff, and you're attacking your enemy and they've got loads of stuff, they all have to block Nessie and Paul. All your other creatures can get through. So if all your other creatures have trample, like with Garrick's Uprising or Crater Hoofs out on the battlefield, you basically all your creatures are going to get through, apart from Nessie. Other great stuff to include, we've got Surat. He's good for giving Galta haste and Questing Beast. Who doesn't love a bit of Questing Beast? <laughs> Apart from your opponents, of course. And then we've got Aggressive Mammoth. He's a three and three green, costing Elephant. And other creatures you control have Trample, and he also has Trample, so Trample for everyone. <laughs> He's an 8-8. Eight, eight. He's a big chunky. He's a big chunk. We love him. <laughs> so moving on to Planeswalkers. There are quite a few Planeswalkers in this deck. I've kind of split them up a bit. So we've got some Ramp Planeswalkers, because who doesn't need even more Ramp in green? We've got Garrick, Wild Speaker, Nyssa, Who Shakes the World, and Nyssa, World Waker. So, Nyssa, Who Shakes the World is probably the best one for ramp. She doubles basically all of your forests. Other ones, we've got three Vivians, and then two more Garricks. Um, oh, Garrick Unleashed, if you have a look at this art, is so nice. I love the, the bear and the wolf next to him. I think it's so cool. And this Vivian as well is from Icoria. It's really cool. These are great just for getting more creatures out and into your hand. And Vivian Reed's got some destruction as well. She destroys artifacts, enchantments and flying, which is what can be the weakness of this deck a bit. There isn't a lot of creatures with reach, if any. So that's what we kind of rely on to get rid of creatures with flying. Move Moving on to wing cons. So how do I win the game? First of all, we've got Concordant Crossroads. I'm going to tell you a bit of a story about this card. So when I first started playing Magic, I really couldn't understand why my boyfriend kept telling me that this card is good. Because why would I want to give my opponents haste? It just didn't make any sense to me, completely baffled me at the time. But then I kept getting into scenarios where this wasn't in my deck 
and I could have won so much faster if I could have given my creatures haste, especially if I could have given gold to haste and immediately dealt that 12 damage to my opponent. So I put this card back in to see how it did and I haven't looked back since. I don't think there's been a time with this deck where my opponents have benefited more from having haste than me, which is what I was afraid of with this card when I started playing because to me, giving everyone haste would sounded just like a disadvantage, but it's really not. It's a great card. So other ones to mention, we've got Crater Hoof. I'm sure I don't need to explain this guy. Then we've got God Eternal Ronas. I always end up bringing this guy out. He seems to always land in my hand. No matter how many times I shuffle my deck, he always comes back to me eventually. He's like a magnet, I swear. So when he enters the battlefield, you double the power of each creature you control until end of turn, and those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. And then when he dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you can put him into your owner's library, third from the top. So he basically never leaves, which is great for me, not so great for my opponents, but that's okay. So if you have a look, if I had played God Eternal Ronas, for example, I've got Galter on the battlefield, loads of other things on there. I play God Eternal Ronas and that doubles Galter's power. And then if I play Crater Hoof, it's just, it's carnage. It's just carnage and it's great. I love it. <laughs> We've got things like Overwhelming Stampede. This is another one where if I've got a goal out on the battlefield and I play this, my creatures are gonna get trampled and plus 12 plus 12. I've done things before where I've played God Eternal Ronas and then played Overwhelming Stampede in the same turn and they're getting plus 24 plus 24. And even if I just have Landwear Elves out, my Landwear Elf turns into a 25 25 trample that's just disgusting it's so mean but i love it so we've got other things like finale of Des devastation and pathbreaker ibex so ladies and gentlemen there is a reason this card is called a goat okay that means greatest of all time in case you didn't know if this guy is out it means trouble for my opponents they're all pretty similar in that they're gonna buff all of my creatures and give them trample usually Finally, we've got Dragon Throne of Tarkir. This card costs a total of nine mana to use all together. Um, so four to put down, you've got three to equip it, and then two and tap to get it going. But it is worth it, the payoff. I usually equip it to Galta, so Galta will have Defender, and then all my other creatures will get Trample and plus 12, plus 12 if I haven't buffed Galter already. So it's really great. Looking at interaction, removal, that kind of thing, we're gonna have a look at Cogler, the Titan 8. We were just talking the other day about how insane Cogler is. So when he enters, he fights up to one target creature you don't control, so that's already one removal. And then whenever he attacks, it destroys target artifact or enchantment defending player control so it's another removal and then if you have humans in there like from love struck beast you can pay to return target human you control to its owner's hand and then he gets indestructible until end of turn we've got inscription of abundance i normally play this kicked so it costs one and a green to play on its own but if you kick it it's three and two green so it costs five altogether. You want to try and kick this every time if you can. I tend to have Galter out so I choose to do the first one so I'll put two plus one plus one counters on Galter and then I gain 14 life so I get an extra two life and then have it fight whatever is in my way at the time just so it busts Galter first. I know it's probably common sense but that's just the way I do it. Next we've got Song of the Dryads. It turns stuff that your opponents have into a colourless forest land, nice and mean for you. And then Beast Within, I'm sure you know about Beast Within. It's great removal, you know, it reads permanent rather than specific type, creature, artifact, enchantment. It does give your opponent a 3-3 beast, but that's not really threatening with this deck, to be honest. And then both enchantment removal, we've got Gem Razor, really cool Ikoria card, nice bit of shiny for you. And Reclamation Sage. And then finally we've got Heroic Intervention. This card has saved my ass many a times, I'm telling you. It's a two costing instant, permanence you control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. If you've got this in your hand, not much can go wrong unless you're against a sack deck, which um, is not the best matchup for Galton to be honest. Looking on to just bonus cards, I might call them like gold star cards, cards that I just really have a bit of a warm into, taking a bit of a shine to, that I just can't really take out of the deck that much. 
So to start with, for all you gold diggers out there, there's Sword and Feast and Famine. It's a bit spicy card. I think it's the most expensive card in the deck, apart from Gaia's Cradle. We've got Swift Foot Boots, lovely equipment. It's great if I can attach it to Golta, but there's plenty of things I can attach it to in this deck that will need protecting, because my opponents will not like many creatures in this deck. We've got Green Sun Zenith. It's a great tutor spell. Don't actually get to play it that much. It's another one of those that just doesn't end up in my hand that much. And then Natural order oh i love this card it's even better than a tutor because you can swap a lanware elf essentially for a nyx blue mansion on turn three and then go on a shopping spree on turn four we've got hex drinker he's a great creature to sink mana into and it soon adds up the other day i didn't have much to play early in the game so i just went on a, sp a spending spree into hex drinker i just sunk my mana into it you get to level eight then it becomes a six six protection from everything then i'm halfway to Golter and enemies can't really stop it at that point they have to stop it before it gets to protection from everything we've got a revive and eternal witness um, revive is newer to the deck but having ways to bring back creatures such as Cogler if he dies when he's fought something it's really useful and then finally we've got Verdant Sun's avatar this is one of the cards I've loved from the beginning and um, I think it's because when I started playing magic I thought life total was just everything so being able to gain 12 life when I played Golta felt really good and with all my big creatures being able to gain life all the time felt good so it'll always have a place in my heart and probably in the deck. So we'll just take a quick look at the lands. So with it being mono green they're obviously all going to be forests so we've got 32 basic forests in the deck and then we've got a few different non-basics so we've got Moss Walk Bridge I normally end up using this card quite a lot actually, it's really surprising. What happened a few games ago, I played it, so when you play it, it has hideaway. So you look at the top four cards and you exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library. And you can pay one and tap it. Once you've got creatures of total power of 10 or greater, you can play it without paying its mana cost. So the other day I had Overwhelming Stampede underneath it and I just kept it there until I was ready to, to swing basically. It was really great, really useful. Uh, we've got Castle Garen Brig, so that gives you some extra mana to spend on creatures, which is what I'm normally doing anyway with this deck. We've got Nyxthos, Shrine to Nyx, obviously going to choose green, another Devotion one. You've got Desert of the Indomitable, a bit of cycling for you. And then we've got a Gaia's Cradle. So you don't have to put a Gaia's Cradle in. It's really up to you. If you can afford it, if you've got it, then go ahead. It's amazing. But I'm not saying it's the be all and end all of my deck. And then finally, we've got Turn Timber Sambosis. Oh, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> so it's one of those flip ones. So it's got a land on the other side. And then it's also a sorcery on one side. So it depends what you need at the time. That's my Golter deck. What do you think? As I've said before, this deck does have a place in my heart, but I'm sure it can still be improved, so I'd love to know. Are there any cards you think I should include or replace? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. I want to know what's working on my channel so I can grow and I can produce more content. And I've popped my social media down below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!